So you just heard the first five, five verses of Woke Up With The Blues In My Fingers by Lonnie Johnson. And I will teach those five verses in uh, this lesson. There are two additional verses, but well, if you can play those first five, you will have no trouble playing those uh, other two. And I will play this according to the tablature that was published by uh, Stefan Grossman in his latest book called uh, Legendary Blues Guitarist, I think. Anyway, I've put a link to that book in the video description. And it's a very interesting book, and, and I'm not affiliated with, uh, with uh, Stefan Grossman. I only uh, uh, applaud all the work he does. And in this book, he tapped out 12 instrumental pieces from beginning to end, which is quite an achievement. I think the book is about 120 pages long. And, well, the best uh, instrumentalists, uh, blues men, like uh, Lonnie Johnson, Big Bill Brunzi, uh, Scrapper Blackwell, Reverend Gary Davis, Blind Blake, and Tampa Red have pieces in uh, that book. And it's only $20 for a download, so uh, that's not uh, very expensive, I think, for what you get. Very good value for your money. Um, <clears throat> now, why this lesson? Well, I'm so fond of Lonnie Johnson's style that I think I should, more people should play it. And of course, it's easier to learn from a video uh, when I show you all the chords and left and right hands uh, than uh, just tap and uh, a scratchy record. <laughs> also, Lonnie Johnson's style is so unique, uh, you don't see many people playing it, strangely enough. And I think some people, well, most people, when, you, when they see or hear one of his pieces, uh, get scared because, well, is not in a certain category of other blues men. For example, Mississippi John Hurt always plays an alternating bass. If you know to play that, well, you can play virtually every uh, Mississippi John Hurt piece. Or like Mance Lipscomb, the thump, the dead thump bass, uh, same thing. You know from beginning to end, you have, just have to do that bass on a couple strings and you know the piece, uh, just have to fill in the uh, treble notes. But Lonnie Johnson does um, a combination of those two systems. And I see it as he plays single string runs that are glued together by some bass notes. For example, uh and so on. You see there's just a couple bass notes between those single string runs. And I think that's a problem for uh, many people. There's no continuity, seemingly no continuity in uh, his playing. But it is, uh, rhythmically, he's uh, very strong. And that's also, of course, a challenge to uh, play those single string runs in time. And I think if you uh, work with this material, this will benefit your playing uh, greatly. And I use Lonnie Johnson licks also in other songs. Uh, I'll give a few examples also in the video description. So don't forget to open that video description and um, I will also show uh, to ease your mind some, uh, there are some hot spots, some difficult spots in this song and I will show you some uh, easier solutions that are musically also very valid. Some things that he did in other songs but are not that difficult. Okay, I'm going to change the camera angle and uh, let's get started. First of all, let's tune. And you know, this piece is in drop G tuning, which uh, is a tuning that Lonnie Johnson used for most of his recordings between 1925 and 1937, uh, approximately. That was his, let's say, pre-war period. And after that, he changed his style and went to uh, flat picking. So G6 tuning or drop G tuning, the first four strings. standard tuning, but then the fifth, your A string, is tuned down to G, and the sixth string is tuned down to D. And this comes in handy, of course, if you want to improvise all over the fretboard when he plays the one chord, or what's supposed to be the one chord, then you can use these two bass strings, and when he plays the four chord, the G in the key of D, then you can use this open string just for the 5 chord, like an A7, 
He has the fret, the second fret of the fifth string, but he does this very rarely. So, um, the tap in the book that we're going to do starts with page 97, and I will refer to the page, of course, and when you see the tap here, I will refer to the line, the sec first line, the second line, third line, and so on. And you see what I've done. Uh, I've put the rhythmic notation above the tap, otherwise it's a bunch of uh, numbers, and you have to look always to the standard notation. So in pencil I wrote out the rhythmic notation. And uh, just a detail, you see, the tap has the numbers between the lines in the spaces between the lines and not on the lines, it's just like I do in my handwritten tap, so I'm not the only one to do that. Okay, so let's, let's start with the first two lines, which is the introduction, very slowly. Now, he's very fond of uh, diminished chords, as you can uh, hear. It's just an ascending run. That's not hard. And I use my two fingers, and the temp of course, to do this. And I hit it hard enough that the third string also rings. It gives it a funky sound. Of course you can do it with your three fingers. Use the ring finger and the middle finger and the index for, well, one for every string and the temp. It's cleaner. Uh, you have a choice there. You can b use both systems. Okay, now let's go on with the third and the fourth line. So we had... Uh, Now, Stefan in this, uh, well, Stefan Grossman in this song, he tapped out, well, he, he uses stems to um, indicate a direction uh, if you have to hit it with an index or a thumb or a middle finger, uh, well, hitting it from below or above. And I not always follow that. In general, I use my index finger for the third and the second string and my middle finger for the first string and the three bass strings are you uh, picked by the temp. Uh, I'm not always doing that but uh, it's well what I mostly do. Now in that first uh, the let's say the fourth measure, the last measure of the second line, I keep those notes short. And then we have the first part of the uh, third line. We have an alternating bass and to give it swing the second and the fourth beat are muted, kept short. And in general what he does is that if the treble note is long then the bass will be long too. Like that. And I use my two, sometimes three fingers on the second string when I have to bend that uh, second string fifth fret. It helps you with the bends, it uh, controls uh, your bends more uh, and you'll be more relaxed. And notice that it's going up and down. And pretty much all the D notes on the second string third fret are with a slight vibrato. That's 
the next uh, measure. And then again those two basses. Now in that measure, the third line last measure, Stefan added two bass notes. I don't play those. I just play the first beat two bass notes and that's it. So and then a grace note. So again that uh, third line of the tap. And then the last line. And this figure will come in every verse. And there are different ways to fret this, of course, to finger this. But I find the most easiest thing. And normally you would play this note with your third finger, but then you're gone, well, you have to go to the eighth fret on the third string. So, with your second finger, the seventh fret of the second string, and then, and then you jump over. And I find it simplest, in this case anyway, to let my second finger go down. Uh, you can do it like that, but you have to go to that fifth fret with your index finger, so you could do that too. That's the easiest thing. So. And then again we have that uh, diminished chord as a turnaround. One more time that last line of the page 97. Alright, then we go to page 98, the first line. So you have a, a D chord, simple D chord, and then again that uh, descending uh, turnaround with the uh, diminished chords, 5-4-5-4. Five, four, five, four. And then I think that's quite genius, you accept, you uh, uh, expect that he goes to the D chord, the one chord, but he simply goes... And Stefan transcribed it with an open string as the... Well, I don't hear it and I think it's easier to simply go the whole way with on that second string. Notice that muting also, again with those basses, very important I think in this song. So we have... And it's go up and down. So. One more time. Now, that um, second line, the last beat, uh, Stephen transcribed it as. So, index and, and uh, the thumb for that uh, fourth fret on the third string. I often do with my index and middle. This is done by the middle. 
like that and with a flick that fourth fret third string is hardly heard it's almost a sort of percussive sound and he does that often uh, London Johnson of course we don't know how he did it did he do it with a tap like that or with like that we'll never know nobody cared to ask him when he was rediscovered in the 60s and nobody interviewed him about his guitar adventures uh, in the 20s <laughs> very sad and because well in the 60s when he was rediscovered he had already switched to flat pick picking and standard tuning he didn't use that g6 tuning anymore so he made a complete change still using uh, some forms of his old style uh, some patterns, but uh, not the tuning and not the finger picking. Certainly, he did finger pick on this song, uh, that is for certain. Okay, um, starting again with that uh, second line. And notice the, the muting again. again. just to glue those two single string runs together. Um, <clears throat> again that same figure but with some variations. Instead of Instead of doing the first time, he now does. And then to the diminished chord, not on the fifth fret, not on the sixth fret, but five, four, five, four. the bottom the first measure of the of page 98 the first uh, the fourth line of the tap first measure that's the last two measures of that page so <clears throat> normally I would do Start with the partial D chord and then move up. But he does. And you can pick either with one finger for each string, like that, or with thump and index. Same sounds. But if you brush up with one finger, it's gonna be too weak. And then. I do a little bit of a double time there, it really fits, and he does it in other songs, but you can play it in time. And Stefan also, um, well, tapped it out like... I don't see it, uh, because the reason in his faster songs he uses this uh, uh, figure, like this. It's the same as... So in this case I think it's the nicest thing and all with the temp. That's the index of course. Notice that the first beat of that measure is a triplet. And then okay we go into the third page, page 99 of the tap. So So in the first line he goes to the 5th and the 7th fret, <coughs> first two strings, and does four um, triplets. Back to our D chord, partial, and then, 
and I accent those, I say the lowest and the highest point. And then it goes to a partial G chord. And notice the muting, don't play. You see, the muting is really necessary in this song. That's quite a handful. <coughs> so <coughs> that's the second line of the tap. And I use when I go to do when we do that uh, G chord a little slide. So it's in the tap, I'm not gonna. Uh, explain every move here, but I accent that, the lowest and the highest point in this case. And then we're sliding uh, to the sixth fret with our second finger. And we're uh, playing a, <coughs> an A chord, that is way of dealing, uh, not dealing with the A in the bass, he doesn't have that, so he has to use the chord uh, to uh, play the five chords. And that last is a really very fast run. You can of course avoid that and play it a bit longer. Also a very difficult one because the first three, <coughs> well the first one, triplet, not a triplet and then again a triplet and then four notes like that. You could simply avoid that by using triplets all the way. Uh, and then, <coughs> so the last measure of the third line, I think it's the most difficult uh, run of this uh, song. He does a, a, a turn around again, you could say. Like that. Uh, that's one beat, and then another beat, and then. Really fast. Uh, of course, you can avoid that by, by using something else, uh, like those two uh, measures. Another one. Or simply omitting it. Simply go to the last verse like that, that's the <clears throat> first beat, first measure of the last line, the fourth line of the tap, page 99. Um, another way of doing it is, is, which one I really like is... So it's... And then you slide, you don't pick, you go to the seventh fret. Those notes are picked, of course. That's the next, the fourth um, verse. So let's go into that. Now, Stefan tapped it out. <clears throat> so the first bar of the fourth verse, the first note there, has an open uh, G, but I feel in other songs he certainly does this. 
So you have a choice there. You can do. And he, he tapped out the seventh fret, uh, which of course is the same note as the second fret on the third string. And I think it, I used this note in any case for that run. So I use different right hand fingerings here, all by the index, 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 all the index, you can do it, you can do thump index, thump index. And notice those. Uh, vibratos there. Okay, one more time. You can really take your time here. All right, there we go to page 100. Uh, the bass follows immediately. You don't have to do that, otherwise you get in trouble. Those were the first two lines, well, to be exact. Uh, <clears throat> Notice that uh, the double bass in there. Now Stefan uh, tapped it out like that, but I, I feel that the rocking movement between the 10th and the 7th fret is easier and it's also easier to go back to the 5th fret than, in, than doing that and going to the 5th fret. So that's the choice there you have and I think it's my way is easier. I also use the same bass throughout here, that measure that top measure, the last measure of the first line of page 100. So... Here I do pretty much with the bass what I think, uh, well, what I like. And you see it w all works. You can do, for example, Now I did that with this bass. You can do it with the first, with the sixth string as well. It doesn't sound that good. The fifth or the fourth is, is okay. And keep it short. Um, so the treble notes are muted by lifting, of course, your fretting fingers and also using your picking finger by resting it on the string and the bases are muted by the right hand side of uh, your palm. And also notice that don't that second string, that open string, is not allowed to ring. Sorry. Let's do that from the top of the page one more time. Uh, so we now once more.
So, again, that, uh, that run is different from the others. So usually we start it with a triplet. Now it's... And that this note, 7th fret, 2nd string, is on the beat. And if you don't play that on the beat, you're going to be in trouble uh, at the end of the first measure of the third line. So that, that slide to the... Gonna be not on time. So watch that. You see, I'm not on time here. the dynamics a bit and starts and we're going from the eighth fret to the tenth fret so not the ninth fret and here I'm also doing something different than uh, what Stefan transcribed he's transcribed this uh, And I use, he does this in other songs as well, so I, I didn't invent it, Lonnie Johnson did it, and it's, it's a bit easier I think. Now we go to page 101 for the last run. So uh, we had that ascending run. differently than uh, on the page um, because I'm omitting those last two verses I think it's been uh, it's been enough uh, already if you have mastered this I'm certainly you're gonna master the two uh, rest to uh, the sixth and the seventh verse which are like this uh, That is one of his typical runs and uh, not that hard, so triplets there. So um, let's play it one more time from... Notice the here, alternating bass and, and a double bass. And the muting of the second and the four beat. line and then I repeat for to enter the, the thing 10th fret 7th fret and D chord wow that's a lot of work in the, into this and uh, I hope you have fun with it and notice also the, the muting. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, check my video uh, how to do the country blues bass. I will put it also in the video description. That will give you a good idea how to do that bass. Well, it's simple, it's open and then muted. It's not like that, muted all the time, but open and then muted. Okay, have fun with it. <laughs> 